The air. Water. Earth. And sun. Awes us. The four awesome forces of nature can provide a thousand times more energy than we need. You are also awesome. You and me and all earth kind are the fifth element. We are literally changing the world. Technology is now harnessing nature's awesome power for electricity, heat, and transportation. And the best news is that the clean energy transition can save us money and create a more prosperous, just, beautiful, and sustainable civilization today. Welcome to the Awesome Earth Kind Podcast, and if you would, tell us who you are, where do you live, and what kind of work do you do? Well, my name is Mike Seidenberg, and I own Eco Energy of New York, LLC, in Rochester, New York, but I basically handle all of Western New York. I travel quite a bit. I do any sort of high-efficiency equipment that I have. Depends on what the house needs as to what we do. My main goal is heat pumps. Um, but I also do traditional furnaces and boilers. It's all. And you do commercial as well as residential, right? Light commercial. I don't do industrial. Okay. And Pretty much anything under 50 tons. Okay. And why do you do geothermal? Well, I, I guess the start is I was told originally that it was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> that's how I got started. Um, Back in 2006 to 2007, I studied and learned and learned everything there was to know about geothermal. I was the only one getting into it. I, I went to IGSPA in Oklahoma. There was no training local. Spent all my own money and all my own time. And I went to work and showed my boss, hey, look at what we're doing. He goes, no, we're not. That's stupid. It doesn't work in New York. You don't understand how business works. So I called my wife, said, come pick me up. I'm going to go learn how business doesn't work. <laughs> so you're know, one of those if it can't be done you're gonna do it huh twice yes that's great <laughs> awesome hey um we uh, like to start out with an inspirational quote we call them a quantum quote that helps sort of frame the discussion or change people's minds or bring them enlightenment about some some different aspects so do you got one you care to share there mike i have one i don't know if it's appropriate or not but oh. my grandfather when i was about 10 years old told me never be dumber than you look <laughs> always a good thing <laughs> so, pretty much since then i wake up every day and i spend at least an hour studying something no matter what uh, it is some sort of personal or professional development all right there we go and you don't look like a dumb guy anyway so hey you know well, just, i'm not good uh, looking takes you to yeah. the next level so <laughs> Well, I'm sure your wife would have a different opinion of that, right? So, <laughs> all right. So, so tell us about the HVAC equipment you install, and and on the geothermal side, uh, why you chose Climate Master? Well, they started with Climate Master because, for one, they were the closest to Expo. So when I went to Oklahoma, I went to the factory and I took their train to trainer course and learned everything about their operation from the beginning. I also learned at the beginning, probably not appropriate to say, but most of them really aren't that much different from a main aspect. You know, Climate Master was started off of Water Furnace. You know, the t engineers from Water Furnace originally, the designs are very similar. And um, I've always stuck with Climate Master because of my distributor. I mean, Piconka Systems has been with me since day one and it doesn't matter what I need. I, I get it now. When I need it, I get it. Even at my first job, my distributor was in the ditch with me fusing pipe at nine o'clock at night. Coincidentally, it was 13 years ago, kind of today. It was Mother's Day weekend. It was Saturday night before Mother's Day. Wow. Yep. That is coincidental. Um, yep. one of your customer, you, said that part of the reason why he went with Climate Master was because they were a U.S. company. Yep, they are. Um, I've always gone with U.S. companies. Pretty much everything I do is U.S.-based companies. Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you get overseas parts in them but you do your best yeah of course wonderful and so so you do the full range um and when you talk to your customers about the advantages of geothermal versus air source versus any sort of fossil fuel system what do you tell them how do you describe each 
the, the biggest benefit with geothermal versus an air source heat pump is it's always the same climate down below. So yes, an air source heat pump is less expensive up front, but a ground source is less expensive over time and you can always reuse the piping. So even if the equipment wears out, you just have a very low replacement cost compared to a full system installation. Um, and compared to fossil fuels? Compared to fossil fuels, it's just a responsibility aspect. Um, anybody who's on propane or oil, it, it's, it's a hands down easy because it's just irresponsible. I mean, you can get the fuel, you can get your fuels cleaned up here or get it cleaned up there whether it's making dirty at your house or making it dirty somewhere else where it's being refined. You know, ground source heat pumps are by far the best way to stay sustainable. So sustainability and then also finances is what you said, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, so who is currently purchasing geothermal? Um, oddly enough, uh, people who are getting ready to retire, people who are lower income or recently retired seem to be my, biggest because they're making their initial investment now so that they can live out the rest of their lives in their home with as little outlet of money as possible because you're only taxed on it when you take it out so the less they take out the less they pay outstanding and so what do you see the forces that are driving geothermal sales in well definitely the sustainability aspect and you know environmental responsibility is becoming more and more prevalent in society it's becoming more common not odd Mm -hmm. and um i was just about i just lost my train of thought <laughs> oh and the cost of equipment is actually becoming more and more cost effective nobody almost nobody buys just a furnace anymore it's a furnace and an air conditioner a furnace and air conditioner and air filtration system and all that we're on a especially with a climate master geothermal it's all built into one so the actual mechanical cost is very similar other than the installation. So the only additional piece is that you're drilling the holes and, um, but then you got your equipment inside. So you don't have the wear and tear of an air source heat pump outside, which is kind of sweet and no fossil fuel. So no combustion, no chance of explosion. And uh, as you said, you're building in heat, cooling and air filtration. Eh? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good stuff. So how do you determine the right solution for a, for a customer? So a customer comes and says, look, I need a heating system. I need an air conditioning system. I need an air filtration, filtration system. What, what's the sort of process you go through with them? Well, first, I always start with uh, energy, um, energy audit. We do an energy audit on every job. Um, that's paid for by your local utility. It doesn't cost the customer anything. I actually do get paid for it. So nothing's free. Um, and then we do a heat loss calculation off of that energy audit, which is very easy. My daughter actually does them for me. 21 years old, she can bang out an energy audit faster than anybody I've ever seen. Wow. Um, and then we look at the resources available at the property. You know, is it, does it have a, is it on an aquifer? The area that I'm in, there's a very large aquifer that runs kind of diagonally through my area. So a lot of people have an endless supply of pump and dump geothermal. Mm. Um, then, you know, if they're on a postage stamp lot, is it, is it make sense to do, you know, ground source? Does it make sense to drill? You know, do they need a new driveway? Because that's where I typically drill is in the middle of their driveway. It's protected. You know, there's nothing underneath it. And is a good excuse to change the driveway out? Just depends on every house. We evaluate it for what it is and then come up with a plan that makes the most sense. All right. And so, uh, you know, you've been doing this for how long, Mike? I've been on my own for 13 years this weekend mm -hmm. or 14. This is my 14th year. One of the two. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've been in the business for 25 years. Wow. I so, did my first ground source heat pump, you know, 13 years ago. Okay. So what challenges have you encountered? What lessons have you learned and what are you doing differently now than you used to do? Well, the, the first lesson I've learned really well is to take the time to size things correctly. It really matters. A lot of people, you know, just hold up a piece of paper and look at the house and go, oh, it needs this size, or that's the size of equipment that's in there, and that's the size you need. And I really take the time to size things well and look at easy opportunities to reduce the size of it. 
you know, if the house needs 72,000 BTUs, but it's got no insulation in the attic for a couple hundred bucks, we can insulate the attic and get them to 48,000 BTUs. It saves a huge amount of money off the beginning. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever yells at you for taking the time to do things correctly. Um, it's the same thing I do with my installers. I give the installers the time to do the job. Well, I, I don't rush them. I don't, you know, back jobs up one after the other. If, you take time to do it right. Great. Do it right the first time, eh? Yep. Good stuff. All right. So in most of our careers, we've all had these kind of down moments where um, you kind of hit this bottom and then uh, you figure some things out and then you sort of coming back and shifting things. You, you want to share, if you would, a uh, story that's uh, one of your worst career moments, if you'd be so kind. Well, it actually all ties back around to 13 years ago today. Um, it was my first job. I had laid out the pipe. I put the pipe in the trenches. I had only buried one of the loops. It was Saturday night at like nine o'clock before Mother's Day. And uh, I took Sunday off. It's been with my wife. It was a, one of, you know, our kids were young then. And I came back on Monday and the customer had used my excavator and backfilled the trenches for me to be very helpful. Oh, in the meantime, it had rained the night before. So the pipe had floated up. Uh. He just shoved all the dirt in, kinked all the piping. And I spent the next week digging up four tons of geothermal pipe loop in the same trenches I had just done. Oh, Taking pieces of plastic out by the truckload. And it took yeah, that was. Yep. I learned to always leave the trenches filled when I leave for the day and use caution tape. Yes. <laughs> All right. There you go. And take the keys. <laughs> <laughs> take the keys to the excavator. <laughs> leave the trenches filled. Do everything to make sure nobody touches that stuff. That's great. <laughs> All right. So, um, and the other side of things is usually uh, for many of us, this kind of aha, big wake up moment um, where all of a sudden, uh, you know, you get this idea and you're like, oh, that's what I, that, that's what, that's it. That's the solution. Is there a time in your life that uh, that happened with you? Um, yeah. I, I kind of already spent this answer. Yeah. But that was when my boss told me this was stupid and it won't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I asked my wife, what was my aha moment? She goes, the day the daddy told you you were stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it, man. All right. We're going to enter into what we call the Pulsar Round, which is a series of short, succinct, amazing, and mind blowing answers to certain questions. So you're going to come up with the amazing answers, and we're going to ask you this series of questions. Are you ready? Hopefully. All right, here we I've go. Got, I've got this half done. Yeah. All right, here we go. What's the best advice you've ever received? Don't listen to advice. There you go. Don't listen to advice, huh? All it's right. It's amazing in business. Every time someone meets me, once they find out what I do, they say, you know what you should do? No, really. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A personal habit that contributes to your success, sir. Every morning. First thing I do is I wake up, I let the dog out, I hit the button for the coffee maker, and I start reading for at least an hour. Hour Something. of reading every morning. Some sort of personal development, even if it's just the internet, learning about something, reading a product manual of a new product, something every day. Nice. Uh, an internet resource you think that folks might want to listen to, take a look at. Well, um, HVAC-talk.com is a good one. Hmm. That's one that I still go to all the time. I posted last night because I'm having a problem with a boiler that I couldn't figure out a three-way valve on. And I got an answer from some stranger across the country. And no matter what, you can find answers to something on there, or at least find resources to find the answers you're looking for. Excellent. That's HVAC-talk.com. Dot com. There we go. All right. Is there a book you'd like to recommend to people and why? Well, usually the book you just finished is the forefront of your mind. Uh, yesterday, I just finished Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That was a good motivational book about, you know, pushing through even when it hurts or when you're tired, which we all go through. 
Yeah, for sure. Can't hurt me, eh? Nice. All right. If you had a magic wand and you could change one thing for everybody in the world, what might it be? Yeah, I haven't come up with a good answer for that. Come on, man. <laughs> Changing one thing. Up. You got the magic wand. You can change one thing today, right now, for everybody in the world, man. I guess it would be make it so nobody has the ability to say, I don't know anymore. Nice. We all carry a smartphone. The entire knowledge of all human history is in the palm of your hand, but people are very happy to say, I don't know to anything just so they don't have to try. Mm, great stuff. All right. What's the one thing you're most energized about today, Mike? Really energized about the fact that, you know, air source and ground source heat pumps and, just plain sustainability in general is really getting pushed well with our government and um, being supported by it more so than it's ever been. So I think the next 20 years are going to be a huge change in my industry to make this from being rare to being the absolute standard. Outstanding. Yeah, it really is amazing how um, everybody is realizing, particularly because of the weather stuff these days and the extreme weather and the changes to the carbon and climate, that uh, we got to make this transition and we got to get off fossil fuels. And a big chunk of those fossil fuels are the ones that we use to heat and heat our homes, heat and cool our buildings. So, so yeah, it's pretty amazing. So cool. Awesome. All right. What's next for you? Like what, what's your next steps in all the different things that you're going on? Well, I'm actually in the process of buying another company um, that should be done here in the next week or two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be merging two companies together, which is going to give a better workforce, more, um, ability for my guys that are heat pump specialists to do more heat pumps and not have to change gears as much. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that and taking the next step forward with that. And I just bought a new excavator. So that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> new toys for the boys <laughs> that's great uh, okay so grand finale if you would a piece uh, share a piece of parting advice and the best way for people to get a hold of you well i guess my parting advice would be like i said never take advice um find out the information you need make your own decisions based on the information that you've gathered don't listen to somebody because they're only going to tell you what they want you to think. Um, and then obviously call me if you need help thinking. Um, <laughs> the easiest way to get a hold of me is through either text message or email because I'm never in the office. If you call the office, they're just going to take a message and I'll call you back from the office. But you can text 585-293-1890 or email is eco, E-C-O, at ecoenergyny.com outstanding anything that you wanted to say that we didn't cover mike no I'm, i spoke a lot more than i'm used to <laughs> <laughs> Man, a few just a few but succinct and clear words and just don't take any advice because uh even his advice right <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate your time and insights. And uh, thank you for, for also bringing one of your customers along. It was great talking to you. So thank you very much, sir. Thanks for joining us today, awesome people. At awesomeearthkind.com, you'll find tips and resources on how to reduce your energy costs and have a positive environmental impact. You can also enter our monthly sweepstakes for a high-efficiency LED light fixture. If you're interested in becoming an EarthKind Energy Consulting Partner, go to awesomeearthkind.com earn. When you refer us to a commercial building and they decide to go clean and save green with EarthKind Energy's consulting services, your referral will save money and you will earn finder's fees worth thousands of dollars. If you're interested in starting your own clean energy consulting business, sign up to be notified of the clean energy business partner that we're launching in May. This intensive program will provide you with the tools you need to start your own clean energy consulting business in the fast growing $7 trillion clean energy sector. Today's podcast was co-sponsored by New Energy Nexus. 
New Energy Nexus strives to create an abundant world with a 100% clean energy economy for 100% of the population in the shortest time possible. The future of clean energy is 100% for the 100%. Become part of the solution by going to newenergynexus.com. Remember, you are an awesome force of nature and can make a real difference. Take your next step to create the clean energy future we all want and our children need and deserve. Until next time, take care, be well, and energize!